Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Lenas. You are now watching More Than 20 Days to Jam, a series containing more than 20 episodes which covers all the topics in Jam syllabus. Each episode comprises detailed class, questions, and homework. The questions and homework are from the Flash Lenas Jam application. This makes the app a requirement for this class. Visit Google Play Store or flashlearners.com to get the app. Do you have trust issue? Reach me on any of my social handles for activation guide or inquiries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. You are welcome to episode number 19 of the 120 Days to Jump Chemistry with Flash Isaac. This class is a mixture of the wave magnetic model, electronic configuration, and periodic table. Now, where Nebel left off, three heavyweight scientists, people like Wanda Helsingberg, Louis de Brogue, and Ewin Schrodinger, they took the concept of atom to the next level. They introduced the wave mechanism model, which was primarily based on the concept of orbital. From these guys, we were able to see or understand properly that electrons, they are moving so fast that they don't behave as particles, they behave as waves. Which means, since they behave as waves, you cannot say that this is an atom. This is a nucleus and this is the, a particular electron. No, you cannot. You can only look at the uh, nucleus and say that, okay, this particular electron should be around here. Because atoms or elements can have so many electrons. You say, okay, this one can be in this particular The periodic table is a table showing the arrangement of electrons. Arrangement of electrons. Wolfgang Dobrenner in 1817 discovered or classified elements based on what is known as trees, which means classifying elements into three, three, three. You group three, you group three, you group three, and you find their average number. Still in it, John Newland proposed the concept of octaves. He said that property of elements change after every eight, 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 eight. And eight. Alexandra Emily identified periodicity and devised the telluric helix. He first identified periodicity and he identified periodic helix or telluric helix, which is a graphical method of representing elements. You see the helix on the screen. That was the attempt. It was until 1869, Dimitri Mendeleev designed the first periodic table. The periodic table made sense, but the problem was, according to Mendeley, the periodic function of elements is as a result of their atomic mass. So, he arranged the elements based on their atomic mass. Then, in 1913, Moseley proposed or brought about the modern periodic table, which we are still using. In his study of the X-ray spectra, he discovered that the periodic property of elements are a function of their atomic numbers, not atomic mass, as Mendeleev proposed. Now, we arrange elements according to their atomic number in the periodic table, not mass, which is, which is to say, very mostly discovered atomic numbers. Yes. Then, what is periodic table? Periodic table is therefore table showing elements according to their atomic number. The first element to appear will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Periodic table is grouped into periods and groups. When you have a periodic table, we have the periods and the groups. The vertical column is referred to as group like this that is group 
and in periodic table we have 18 groups and the horizontal rows like this like this are referred to as periods we have seven periods members of the same groups they have the same number of electrons in the outermost shell sodium is a group one element it has this one electron in the outermost shell potassium is in group one it has one electron in the outermost shell so hydrogen lithium sodium potassium they are group one elements they have one electron in the outermost shell and they are very very reactive so so reactive because it is easy for them to give out electrons still looking at that reactivity of group one increases as you go down this makes fraction the most reactive metal group one a or group one elements are referred to as alkaline metals group two a or group two elements are referred to as alkaline and metals group 7a or group 17 are referred to as the halogen families fluorine blue, uh, bromine iodine and acetine fluorine these are the halogen families they have seven electrons in the alchemist shape and they are very very reactive in fact fluorine is the most reactive non metal while fraction is the most reactive metal now it is not readily available it is only found in small quantity and we produce it more in the lab group 8a or group 18 or, if, or group 0 are referred to as the noble gases they are stable they achieve their configuration for helium its stable or a uh, duplex configuration is two because helium needs just two electrons in the outermost shell or it has just two electrons and it is a k shell element and it is complete it doesn't have any chromium that is stable duplex normally other elements they need eight electrons in the outermost shell to complete their configuration and that is referred to as stable octet periods we have seven periods period one are very short and there are just two elements hydrogen and helium helium is in group zero or uh, uh, 18. periods two and three is short we have just eight elements period four and five are long we have 18 elements period six very long about 32 elements and period seven is incomplete as we are still discovering other elements so far we have 118 elements there's a debate or a belief that it is 119 the good news is that you cannot have the two values in an option so 118 119 it is we talked about periodic properties of elements so there are certain properties of elements that increase across the group or along the period so what are the properties? Now the periodicity of atomic properties are ionization energy, atomic radius, electron affinity, electronegativity, and electropositivity. Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom. Each atom has electron in atomic share and inside and the other shares to remove electron from an atom you need energy so this energy required to remove electron from atom share how does it vary across the period and how does it vary down the group plus means increases and minus means reduces ionization energy increases across the period as you go down across the period, ionization energy increases. Then as you go down the group, ionization energy reduces. Atomic radius is the size of the atom. How big the atom is, the distance from the nucleus to the outermost shell. Atomic radius will increase down the group and reduce across the period. Because across the period, you have more electrons in the outermost shell and they are getting more compact but along the group more shares are being added electron affinity is the energy released by adding an electron to a neutral atom 
if an atom is neutral, you give electron, you donate electron to it. That is electron affinity. It increases across the group and reduces. It increases across the period and reduces down the group. Which means as you go down the group, the energy released by adding an electron to a neutral atom decreases. But across the period, it increases. Electronegativity is the power of an atom in a molecule to attract electrons to itself. So power of an atom to say electrons, come here! That is electronegativity. This is why fluorine is so reactive and it is the most electronegative uh, element. So the more electronegative you are, the more you can draw electrons to yourself as a non matter And the part for matter is electropositivity. Uh, positivity. The more electropositive you are as a matter, the easier it is for you to give out electrons because electropositivity is the measure of the tendency of an atom to lose electrons. So, electronegativity across the period increases and down the group it reduces. Meanwhile, electropositivity decreases across the period and increases down the group. Ladies and gentlemen, take note of the following. Ionization energy increases with charge and it reduces with atomic radius. Then spinning effect also affects ionization energy. So the nuclear charge, radius and spinning effects are factors that affect ionization energy. Now for atomic radius, the atomic radius of ion is lesser than the atomic radius of the same atom. For example, the atomic radius of neutral ion is greater than the atomic radius of ion, ion plus, just plus one, and the uh, radius of ion plus one is greater than the radius of ion two, and the radius of ion two is greater than the radius of ion three. So the more positive ion you have, the lesser your radius. Meanwhile, for negative ions, the negative, the ions, they have bigger radius than the atom. Sulfur ion has a bigger radius than sulfur atom itself. And let's take a look at some questions. The first question here says, Group 1A metals are not found in free nature. Are not found free in nature because they are very reactive and unstable. Of course, you are in group 1. You have just one electron in the atmosphere. You can easily give it out and you become very, very reactive. The stability of the noble gases is due to the fact that they have doublet or octet electron configuration. Doublet, two in the atmosphere, helium, it is complete. The others, once you have the complete eight in the atmosphere, you are stable. That is noble gases for you. Option B is the correct option. The ability of an atom to attract electron to itself is called electronegativity. That is the ability of atom to attract electron to itself. And electron affinity is the energy released by adding an electron to a neutral atom in the gaseous state. Then electropositivity measures the tendency of an atom to lose electron. With that, we come to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we shall be looking at electronic configuration and shape of molecules.